And it's called the Disenfranchised Podcast, where that podcast all about those franchises of one, those films that fancy themselves full-fledged franchises before falling flat on their face after the first film. I am your host, Stephen Foxworthy, and joining me, as always, the man that puts the jig in Jigsaw, it's my co-host, Brett Wright. Hey, Brett. Hello, Stephen. How we doing today, man? I'm doing all right. I had a cool little intro. It was all Jigsaw-like for both of you, but I just accidentally closed it and lost it forever, so... No! <laughs> yeah, I love that for me. Look, you guys will never see it. You That's you it. teased it. You teased it, and I was so excited to hear it. I know, yeah. Look, no, we're 45 just... seconds in. We can always just take it from the top. <laughs> Very to easy go... to edit around. I'd have to go rewrite them. I don't remember what they said. Oh, bitch. Ah. <clears throat> oh, like you lost them, lost them. Like you closed yeah. them and did not save yeah. like because just, your I brain just... took a vacation or something. Like, <laughs> Well, yeah, because I just had them on a Google Doc. I was like, I don't need to save these. Oh, I'm going to throw no. away as soon as I use them. Yeah, yeah. no, then I accidentally closed it. Like Brett, address. I so, mean, there you go. When I was when I was in when I was in high school, we used to ask a question, and that question was, "What would Jesus do?" And the answer invariably came back to, "Jesus saves." Um, yeah, that's true. He saves about every ten saved. minutes. Yeah. Auto save, save. auto save if you can. Jesus auto saves when available. Hell yeah, he does. And then you save or again heaven, because yeah. you don't know if you remember if you remember saving a minute ago, so you save again, and then that's just <laughs> like a loop you go in for like ten minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, Brett, it's been a while. We are always, always, always happy when you're able to join us. Thanks. Good to be back. Absolutely. Man, I just, I miss you when you're not here, buddy. I miss you. I know. I miss you guys, too. I'm just the, you know, I said this earlier. uh, I'm like the wacky neighbor that shows up every few episodes. That's true. It's a real big cheer from the studio audience. And, you know. is, is that why we can only like see your eyes over the fence? We've never seen your actual face. Is that? No, no that's his beard. That's oh, the, gotcha. That's, okay. that's, that's his beard. beard. That's the big bushy beard he's got. Uh, that other voice you hear belongs to the symbol of uh, evolution and progress. It's my co-host, Tucker. Hey, Tucker. I like that intro. Thank you. That makes me feel good. Hi, Steven. How's it going? You're like a, you're like a spiral. Uh, doing all right, man. Doing all right. Because this week, we are talking about, at the beginning of this month, we covered the redheaded stepchild of the Conjuring franchise, which is the highest grossing horror franchise of all time. This week, we're covering the redheaded stepchild of the second highest grossing horror franchise of all time. Brett, what movie are we covering? We're talking about Spiral from the Book of Saw. 2021 Spiral from the Book of Saw, directed by uh, series stalwart Darren Lynn Bowsman uh, and starring Chris Rock, Samuel L. Jackson, Max Minghella, Marisol Nichols, uh, Dan Petronevich. I probably butchered that. Sorry, Dan. Uh, Richard Zeppieri uh, and many more. What a cast. Gentlemen, what a picture. First, I got to start off by saying that the quote, the thing you just quoted about what Jigsaw said about the spiral, that's not in any of the other movies. They made that shit up for this one. Correct. Um, yep. So, like, it's like the people that wrote this movie didn't even watch the others because uh, there's the classic line that's been getting called out recently on social media mm-hmm. um, where Chris Rock's character says, Jigsaw never targeted cops. Um, did you watch any of the other movies at all? I mean, he didn't exclusively <laughs> target cops like this killer no. does. But no, but he specifically says Jigsaw never targeted cops. Um, never. That's, that's pretty much what the entirety of Saw Two is about. Um, yeah, no, Saw Two is 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 the A cab movie for sure, which is one I've seen. It it, it was one of the ones that I had seen prior to this week. And hot, Brett and I did take. our homework this week. Hot take two. Is my favorite, in my opinion, the best one. Oh, that is a very for hot me, take, sir. For me, too, is the worst one because it took an excellent concept and it, it it proceeded to make the entire series a police procedural soap opera with some gory kills in between. Yeah. I'm not sure we watched the same. Yeah, movie. I was going to say, I don't think that's this really? movie is a police yeah. procedural, but the rest of the yeah. franchise, not so that's much. That's what this one we just watched is. The yeah. other ones are not like that at all. Right. The second one, I would say the second one kind of falls into that category. And no. this is your boy saying that I've only seen four Saw movies. I saw the first Saw movie when it came out. 
and I thought it was the shit. Mm. I saw the second one because the first one was the shit. And, uh, well, I guess we're doing the thing where we say our history with the movies. I guess I just kind of barreled into that. Sorry, you guys. But hey, no, I mean, it was no, no, It was yeah. yeah. there anyway. It's it better works. if it's organic, quite frankly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I saw the second one because I really liked the first one. And the second one was really disappointing to me because, like I said, it, it just kind of felt like they changed the whole tone of it and i feel like there was a very clear direction it's kind of like the final destination movies like you have you have a gimmick you have a plot device and you just you know do different situations using that plot device but instead i feel like saw 2 went too deep into it which for you that's a good thing brett and maybe i don't know how steven feels about it but for you guys, that's a good thing. And for me, like, I kind of like the simplicity of the first one. And I saw the second one, did not like it, saw the third one because I was like, okay, maybe, maybe cooler heads will prevail. Nah. And that's it. And then I watched Spiral. That's all I've seen. So but just... I okay. have watched all the kill counts for every movie so i know the general plot of every film and i know the specific details of every kill okay okay so really now that's just... no that's no that's no that's not the same as watching them i will concede to that i have only seen four of them and though i do know the details of the other that's not the same as watching them i completely agree with that I'm done. Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> How yeah, dare yeah, you yeah. try to talk on your own podcast? <laughs> Sorry, you are Brett. nasty, I mean, this man. I just want to get in front of that, you know. Hashtag Brett problems. That's kind of always been the case. Uh, <laughs> trying to ask. say anything on my own podcast. Um, no, so, okay. So you just wanted it to stay like it's one game, every movie. No expansion on lore. Nothing more about Jigsaw. Just you wanted a tight I mean, one game story and that's it. For like an entire I, franchise. This is an important question. I think that I would have preferred that, yes. I don't know if the films had been made that way, if I would have liked them any better. But seeing the second one and the third one, that's what I would have preferred, I think, over what we got. And that's, I realize that's a me problem because people fucking love these movies. People yeah, they do. Fucking, there's 10 of them now. People Second highest grossing horror movie franchise of all time. Like, I, I concede. I'm the odd. I'm the weird one. God, you're peaking so hard right now. <laughs> That's all right. I can fix it. I know. And I think, and my so my opinion on that is is the same reason that the Conjuring universe is so popular is because. Which I also don't like. It's all connected. It's all one I'll say coherent storyline, but I'll explain why I say coherent later because like it's not in a lot of aspects. It's but... gonna be a Brett heavy episode, folks, and yeah. we are here for it. Well, because I spent I, I spent the last forty eight hours watching all nine movies. Like so. I I also watched a bulk of the Saw franchise this week. I, there was one movie I did not get to, and we'll talk about it here in a second. Um, but like you condensed that. Like I spent like four days. You spent two. Yeah. Um, so, and I will say, and my take is while we're on that topic, I feel like you have to watch them close to one another. You don't got to do what I did, but you have to watch them close enough together to remember details from the previous movies mm -hmm. to understand what the fuck is going on. Cause um, they don't have a previously on at the beginning. Like they did in those early no, Friday the 13th no. movies, which is a damn shame because I feel like it would have worked better for me, uh, especially the second one and the third one. If, if it did uh, like this, maybe I would like this if it were a TV show, you know, well, that's the crazy uh, thing. I'd like to admit, like I alluded to earlier on another recording, like it's, it felt like binging a TV show because it feels like a TV show because it's just a one constant story. The one next story, movie, yeah. the next movie picks up right where the previous one left off. Just almost always. Yeah. yeah. Almost always. Yeah. It's one continuous narrative. So which that's... which is rad, but like it, it as far as horror films go, that's that's not really for me. Like I mentioned Final Destination before, and I think that works so well because they're all 
individual stories, I, they connect in small ways. They all take place in the same continuity, but they're not so connected that it's like, for lack of a better term, like a soap opera where you kind of have to, you have to, like, if a new Saw movie comes out, you should probably watch the last one a couple hours before you go see it. At least. Right? Yeah. To get the best experience. And that's just, that's just not for me, really. I might do that, though. Like, now that we've discussed this, I might sit down and do do a Brett 48-hour Saw marathon just to see if that, like, because I want to appreciate these movies. because And then go see Saw X when you're done. Yeah. I'm into that. I'm way into that. I might do that. Yeah. And if we do that, we'll do like an amendment. We'll do a special, what are we watching? But it won't be a, what are we watching? Or we'll do a disenfranchise at the movies where where Tucker benches the Saw franchise. And, and to hear that, it. to hear that, you'll need to go to patreon.com slash disenfranchpod. And I'd, and I'd be yeah. super into that. I'd be super into that. Because yeah. I'm incredibly curious what they do with Saw 10. Because like, the story ended, more, more, more or less. There's still places they could go. There's some dangling threads that they could pull on, but the story is mostly over. From um, what I heard, the seventh one was supposed to be a two-parter, and the studio nixed that idea. So they literally stopped at what they where they were supposed to start stop at the end of part one. And from what I understand, they're going to be revisiting a lot of those elements, not all, but a lot of those elements in Saw X is my understanding. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Cause I, I would like to see where they go with the rest of it. Cause there was some, there's some dangling threads and some plot holes and some questions, particularly the big reveal at the end of seven. Um, which for me was the best part of that movie was seeing that, that individual again you guys you're drawing me in man we're 12 minutes in and i'm already ready to like start <laughs> my saw marathon because yeah, i want the, to like these movies the i want to thing. so bad it's what i love about it like especially jigsaw which which you'll see soon steven once you watch it like the way that rewatch it but yeah rewatch it yeah uh we'll you'll be able to appreciate it now um fingers crossed <laughs> hopefully uh, but the way that they are able, because this is a big thing for me. We all know I love like recasting people is a big thing that I hate. Right. I, I love when they get same actors to come back. And you love lore roles. and you love continuity. Yep. Yes. Which is that's nothing, but that's all soft fucking is. Um, it really they, is. They get no matter how from... bad the continuity is. Like if we like, look, we cast this guy in two in a very small role. We want to bring this character back in three and make him a main part of the next three movies. So, yeah, is he great? No, but he's our guy. Yeah, and and they'll bring back, like, minor characters. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you saw Survive a Trap show up in the Survivor in, thing. In Seven, yeah. In Seven, yeah, like... The deep cuts on Seven are pretty, pretty great, honestly. There's a lot of really fun deep... And apparently the... Well, no, because that would be that would be a spoiler for Saw Seven, and I don't want to spoil anything for Tucker. Yeah, yeah, don't spoil it for me. Anyways, we we're going to be spoiling the shit out of Spiral. So if you've not Which, seen yeah. Spiral yet, Which doesn't abandoned. matter. I did watch that. Yeah, right, that and I matter. watched. But what's cool? So, so I, I even well, I have to watch it. that in the rewatch though, because I don't want to watch this one again. No, no, no. no. Am okay, I the only I one that actually okay. liked this movie? I guess so. The you only person are. ever that liked this movie. Yeah, I I can't imagine had, anyone likes it. I liked it. I'll get. I guess I'll get into why later. But no, I had fun with Spiral. Yeah, well, okay, so what I wanted to mention, though, because I thought it was really cool, along yeah. the lines of continuity and all that, is the big reveal at the, well, at the end of Seven, but also that character's reappearance in Seven in general. Mm -hmm. um, well, the big reveal at the end of Seven is, did you know that's hinted all the way back at Two? There's actually... Yeah, because they kept wanting to bring him back. Oh, okay. You guys, yeah. Do you guys want to say it, and then I can take off my headphones and put them back on? No, no, no. Okay. I mean, we can like it's it's honestly kind of fun tiptoeing around it. To be honest with okay. you, okay, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Work, 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 work. But no, yeah, they 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 had been in negotiations for a while and they couldn't figure out how to make it work. Um, there was a lawsuit. There was a ton of shit going on, and they finally got it settled in time for seven. <laughs> was it Donnie uh, Wahlberg? Okay. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. But was do it you, Donnie Wahlberg? Uh, do you want me. us to tell no, you? Don't tell me. Well, you you tell saw me. three, didn't you? No, you're you're thinking of oh, four, Brett. I'm thinking of four. Sorry, my bad. Yo, and uh, just a caveat to what I said about seeing the first three Saw movies. 
I saw them when they came out, and I have not watched them since. Oh, so, okay. Well, it's been a minute and a fucking half. Sure, sure, sure. So sure. Uh, outside of the first one, you probably don't even remember at all about what happened. Oh, I've watched the first one so many times, but I don't think I've seen it in probably about five years. First one is is just as good as I remember it being. It the Yo. first one was James that James Wan guy. I think he's going places. Good this may so be a hot take, but you, good director. Did either of you see that when it came out, Brad? Like when it was fresh? Uh, yes, I want to say I did. What a time to be alive! Boy, that movie was something. Wasn't it was. It? it was like it was like being there when Blair Witch first came out. Like it was. It was a thing. Yeah. It was a phenomenon. Like it was micro nothing budget movie. Man, all mm-hmm. they paid for in that movie was Carrie Elway's, and like he probably and read Danny the script Glover and was like yeah like well and Danny Glover probably the same way they probably read the script and was like yeah like we'll take less because this is gonna be something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maybe but yeah, and that that's. Really, yeah, and I mean that that script is so tight and so, so tight. perfect, and the and the filmmaking only enhances it. And yeah, I that's that's kind of what I love about that first movie. And I don't think any of the other sequels really touch the magic of that first movie. To the me, original for Saw me. is a five star movie for me. Mm. If I rated movies on Letterboxd, it would be Saw would be a five stars mm. with a fucking bullet. Even even two, my favorite didn't get a five. I got a four and a half. We got real close. One is a four. One dropped off a little bit for me this time. Not a whole really? lot, but a, wow. a little bit. Um, but the reason I love two so much is just because because of how because I I know I saw two when it first came out, mm-hmm. and like this is how after I was like obsessed with the first one and thought it was so fucking cool, and even this time rewatching it, just the end of two like the reveal the lights come on the same way and like it's it's just like a you get to see what the aftermath of the first movie and like you're back in the bathroom again and this is like fucking this is awesome like they they actually came back to this location like it's so fucking cool and i i love it whereas to me that feels very very fan servicey because you're you're, well, you're kind of you're you're watching it, it and you're like this this room means something to me it's the same problem i have with the last jedi or not last Jedi. I love the last Jedi return of Skywalker or the, whatever it is, the rise of Skywalker, whatever <laughs> yeah. the fuck that last JJ. Figure it out, was. Steven. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so tired. Um, the rise of Skywalker is there's all this shit in there that means absolutely nothing to the characters on screen and means everything to the audience. And so the people going through that, they're in this dingy bathroom and we're just like, yeah, this is cool. I love this. And the characters on screen, well, there's no emotional weight there whatsoever. I will take umbrage with that. Amanda's in that bathroom. It has okay, emotional weight to you, her. But you don't know that until the end of the movie. You don't know that at the moment. And I don't know that it imbues it with enough importance retroactively is, is my critique. And again, okay. that's a nit that I'm picking and I'll admit that. But that that's yeah. my that's my issue with that particular scene. Um, okay. did, did you watch all of these as they were coming out though, Brad? Um, I, as with my ratings on the rewatch, I did fall out around four or five. And when did, did you pick them back up? Like, when did you get back into them? <sighs> Once I had heard that seven was good or six was good. Okay. Or better anyway. Six, um, six is, six is pretty good. Like six, six is my six, number yeah. three. Yeah. Six is when it six is when it starts to peak back up, mm-hmm. um, but like four and five are the worst ones. Um, I I well I mean four ranks pretty low. Five five is five and two are my least favorite right now on wow. on this last rewatch that I did this past week. And I, I I watched this week I watched Saws one through seven and Spiral for this podcast. Uh, I did not get to Jigsaw. I was going to I had planned to, but I'm going to be covering that one with Pod and the Pendulum in a few weeks. And so I might I might watch it tomorrow just to complete my rewatch in time for Saw uh, X. And then if my situation doesn't improve, I may be seeing Saw X next week. Um, but um, beyond that, I may because I'm going to need I know I'm going to need to watch it again. And if I don't like it, it's just going to be a slog to watch it again when I have to review it for Pod and Pendulum. So I don't know yet. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. The, the end of Jigsaw might hit like the end of Saw 2 does for you. I'm not real sure. It might. I loved it. Sure. Uh, I remember the twist. Like I, and that's, that's another thing about this franchise as a whole. 
Um, so to answer your earlier question, Tucker, I did not see any of these movies when they were in theaters. Um, in fact, I didn't watch uh, any Saw movie at all until I watched Jigsaw on Amazon Prime. That's a weird uh, place to start. It is um, because my uh, my ex-wife was watching it and she was like, I'm going to watch Jigsaw. And I'm like, oh, I've never seen any of these. She's like, oh, they're kind of fun. And I was like, do I need to know anything? She's like, you're probably good. I was like, oh, okay. And surprise, uh, I was not good, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends of the podcast. Jigsaw's the seventh one? That's the seventh one? That's the eighth one. Eighth, the eighth one, one. okay. The, gotcha. the, 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 the one that came out right before, right, that's, that's but before Spiral. Yeah. That's so insane. Did, yeah, I've never seen any of these. This is the eighth one. Do I need to know anything? No, you're fine. No, you're good. Especially in this series, man. Things, yeah. Like yeah. we were talking to before, it's 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 a whole, it's a big story. It's not even like a connected universe. Like it's like just one in, story. Like something yeah, at the end of a TV movies. series. God, I don't need to know like the last yeah. 20 episodes, like, do you I? Just, you just hop in on the, the end of the fourth season. Yeah, Steven, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because uh, here's the thing. I was very horror of, and I've, I've said this on this podcast and many others. I was very horror averse growing up. Uh, my parents didn't like it raised very religious. I know a shock to everyone. What? Um, <gasps> Brett, Brett, breathe. It's going to be okay. Uh, what? <laughs> what will we do with this newfound information? <laughs> this seems like something you would have mentioned before. Um, what? Go record a special show on the Patreon called this called Christianity <laughs> Corner starring Steven. Letting us know all about his Christian uh, uh, upbringing. upbringing and religious and, trauma and talking about some crazy Christian movies. Uh, check it out on Patreon. It's fun. It's very fun. Good time. It's fun. We need, it's we not need for everybody. Episode soon. But I love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, so I didn't I didn't engage with horror movies much at all. Like the first movie that you could even classify as horror adjacent that I saw was Independence Day. Um which I don't, um, Brett probably wouldn't even count. It's um, adjacent. I time. would say adjacent. Yeah, I mean, adjacent. all I know is that autopsy scene uh, made it possible for me to not sleep that evening. So scary yeah. as fuck. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. is the scariest scene for sure. Um, but then, um, and then a couple years ago, at your recommendation, Brett, I did watch the first two saw movies uh for my um halloween marathon that i used to do every year um when i wanted to try to engage with more horror um so i'd try to like you know pick a good smattering of horror films and brett recommended for either my first or second that i engage with the first couple saw movies and i did i really liked uh i thought the first one was good it was really good actually and the second one was not um and that's kind of where i landed and that's kind of where i stopped until this past week and i've been listening First of all, I do occasionally show up on the pod and the pendulum and we are friends like all of them are friends of the show, um, but their saw episodes are like next level fun. Like they are they're some of the best episodes that pod and the pendulum has ever put out. And if you're not listening to them, you are missing out on some good shit. And I haven't even been on any of them. I have no stake in this game, but they're really fun episodes. They are really, now, really good. Now, if they're fun, I'll listen to them. Where do they stand? Because I don't want to, if they're fun, I'll listen to them. But if I'm going to be pissed off, listen to them. No, 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 no. Mike, um, Mike is watching them for the first time and is gaining an appreciation for them. I think he stopped at three. Um, but uh, Ar- uh, Ari, Ariel Power Schaub uh, from uh, Ghouls Magazine, um, she is kind of co-hosting this um, this series along with the rest of the panel. Um, but she is a Saw super fan. Like Saw is her franchise. And so she even like Saw 2, she says, this is not my favorite. Uh, this may be my least favorite, but I still it's a Saw movie. And so I'm still having a great time. It's so, for Scream uh, 3. Yeah. This, man, why why do I have the hottest take that Saw 2 is the best one and or my favorite? I don't, I don't, I don't know, know, man. Why, do I... Even Saw fans don't think that. I don't, Look, man, I don't if, know. if I'd have known that, I would have recommended you for you for that episode. Am I, I absolutely would have. Am I the wrong one? <laughs> no, it's the no, children who are Brett. wrong. <laughs> what if what if everybody else is wrong, Brett? Yeah, no. What everybody else is wrong. That's Wait, how that's cults def- start, that's Tucker. That's a possibility. It I mean, is right. it probable? I don't know, but it's certainly possible. Well, well, let me let me say I, I wouldn't have been able to be on the episode because I didn't I didn't like I I, I remember liking Saw 2 a lot. Mm-hmm. And and here's and here's here's the thing. I Saw has always been my favorite horror franchise. 
um, unless unless we, I mean, I have come around to considering Ghostbusters a horror movie, but you I don't should, know if yeah. I want to. You know, I mean, I don't want to. I don't know if I want to call it my. It feels weird calling Ghostbusters a horror franchise, right? Like it's kinda. a horror comedy franchise, though. It's sure, I suppose. it's it's comedy some forward. Of that shit is scary. That librarian ghost, I jump every fucking time. I've seen that movie yeah. hundreds of times. I jump every fucking time. And I've always Man, said I, I always is creepy as hell, dude. The severed heads in the subway always. I always covered my eyes when I was a kid. Yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah. Sorry, no. I missed it. <laughs> but like. <laughs> I will. I will never not love quoting Ghostbusters too. On with you on this podcast. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I do it when you're not here, and I forget that it's an us thing, and like you're not there to like come back. And Steven's just like shrugging, and I'm like, oh, if Brett were here, he would. Stephen Fox, were they smiling like... politely? <laughs> you need more appreciation for Ghostbusters too, Steven. Um, I mean, anyway. you own it. I just need to watch it more. That's a problem. Um, but uh, so, I own actually yeah. all of them, but Afterlife. That's that's weird. That's that is weird. That is really weird. But anyway, but Afterlife's um, the only one I really don't like that much. So, yeah. Uh, well, I I think you should re revisit. Re- you only saw it that one no, time, right? Let's, no, no, abort, abort, abort. <laughs> anyway, you only saw it that one time, right? <laughs> oh, the saw, can of worms. Saw, saw, saw films. You saw it the one time. The Saw movies. The Saw movies. The Saw movies. I'm I didn't saying, see revisit. Them. It's all my voodoo. I, I'm just I saying, mean, revisit <laughs> it, man. You might like it the second time. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, no, right. he won't. He won't. Um, so, <laughs> and I don't I, think Brett wants me to. Honestly, honestly, no. You'd probably hate it more, and that would be terrible. Um, <laughs> oh, that's, no. that's what we don't want. Um, <laughs> so, like, it, I will tentatively say, outside of Ghostbusters, which is a whole my favorite horror comedy franchise, my favorite straight up horror franchise is Saw, and. I I don't know. I feel like a poser saying that in retrospect because I loved all of them more or less when I watched Mm -hmm. them originally, but I only ever watched them like once except for Mm -hmm. Saw 1 and 2. I watched those a lot, Um, but the subsequent ones I didn't watch that much to the point where I didn't remember most of the story after 3. Yeah, I can see that. Um. I mean, that's when it becomes very trap forward as well. But that's also when you get most of the lore after three, too. Yeah. And and it becomes like, I don't when these were coming out. The timeline gets really wonky after three, too. Well, yeah, there's I mean, yeah, there's a lot you, of flashbacks and concurrent timelines. Concur- yeah. What's in the past? What isn't? Or a Boros um, snake eating its own tail shit. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't as bad as people make it out to be. To be it's fair. not. But I, um, it, it it is, it has one of the most, it is the franchise, I think, barring maybe the Fast and the Furious, has one of the most confusing timelines. Actually, Fast and Furious is fairly straightforward in terms of its timeline. You got the first three, um, and then you double back, uh, and like four through seven take place between two and three. And then you go in, or I think four through six, and then you continue on from there but yeah so the problem is that it the timeline like the main timeline is mm-hmm. fine it's I, I watching them all i i understood everything because like i said each each movie picks up where the previous one left off right so you can follow the main you know present day storyline just fine it's it's when they do the flashbacks that fill in time gaps from previous right. movies where it gets confusing for people yeah and that's just because there were eight fucking movies over the course of more than eight, eight years. fucking years well yeah that's right the last one comes out like 2014 jigsaw comes out 2014 i think yeah like, is that right? so and still like or 2017 no there's it's, still it's a year between each movie Right. And like your average film goer doesn't care that much. They just go, ah, oh, Saw movie. I love these things. Let's go it's watch Halloween. It. it must be Saw. It's Halloween. Let's go watch a Saw movie and see people get mut- mut- murdered. Um, so they don't, they're not paying attention. So of course right. they're going to be confused. And that's where you get the, the, the whole narrative that the Saw movies don't make any sense. Um, right. Which isn't true. They but do. I, but um, I think what you said earlier is really astute to that point where it benefits you to watch all of these in yes. rapid succession because then it clarifies so much of that timeline for you. Like yeah, all that you're, stuff you're where remember. you're like, wait, what happened? Yeah, because it's fresh. You've just seen you, it. Yeah, you can easily take this flashback and know where it goes. Exactly. Like, and so like 
it's a lot easier to understand when you watch them all close together. Right. Yeah. Uh, if I were watching these a year apart, fuck no, I would have no. Yeah, idea. no. And I, I think, and that's why I fell off originally, which is the mm-hmm. point I was meandering towards. Um, that it's just we got like, there. We got there. We got we, there. We got there. Yeah, 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 we got there. Um, is that I just fell off of them because they did start to get confusing. Like I loved right. them, and I loved that they constantly tried to tell a continuous story, and that's that's what I always said. That's why I always said it was my favorite. Mm. ever you know since before this like because you're the lore and continuity boy and and it's the and, and i would always argue it's the only horror franchise that has a continuing ongoing coherent story it's not like halloween it's not like nightmare on elm street is not it's not like friday the 13th where continuity is fuck all whatever it wants to be each film right yeah and, we we change the rules as we go because fuck you that's why yeah and like the lore is inconsistent I'm looking at you, Final Destination. Um, <laughs> like, it's just it just changes. Like, but this is the only horror franchise outside of The Conjuring now um, that tells a coherent single narrative that you can follow over the course right. of multiple films, and it's all pretty consistent. In fairness, I think The Conjuring is telling a few different narratives over the course of several films, but oh, sure. it all it's all connected. They, they straight up intertwine and shit, yeah. Right. It's it's the MCU of horror, basically. Yeah. It's 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 Close the second get, su- yeah. it's the second successful shared yeah. one, cinematic. One universe. of the reasons I love The Nun so much is because at the end of The Nun, when it ties back into the beginning of the first movie that I wasn't yeah. expecting, and I went, Holy shit, it's it's the same reaction I had to the end of Saw Two. Holy shit. Holy that's shit. the bathroom yeah that's that's the thing that's the thing i know that, that's the thing i know right that's the thing i know <laughs> leo <clears throat> yeah leo pointing meme leo um, pointing meme yeah and you know it, i just it, man i just think it's neat i just i just think it's neat um you know speaking of the narrative um maybe we should talk about the plot you guys what do you think about that, boys? Yeah. Let's talk about the plot of the movie we're actually talking about, which is not part yeah. of this continuity. It's but not. Kind of is. But and it that, kind of is because they reference John Kramer and they reference these crimes happen, even though it, right. takes place, it takes place in continuity, but it's not part of the main story. Right. right. Yes. Right. This, this so is my solo, a Star Wars story. Before. Yes. Be- <laughs> right. So before we get into the plot, one thing I do want to say real quick, Jigsaw did not perform as well as many of the previous entries with the exception of Saw. The only Saw movie that grossed lower to it up to that point domestically was Saw 6, um, which only which grossed less than $30 million. Uh, Jigsaw grosses oh, not quite 40 uh, to become the second lowest grosser of the franchise. And that's uh, and coming I, right off of four and five, which are the worst ones. And six right. is and the first good one again. So that's ex- why. Exactly. And that's that's always how it happens. And but because the response to six was so low, um, I, I had mentioned before, I think it was on this recording, that seven was supposed to be a two parter. Well, based on the poor performance of, of uh, six, they cut that one in half. And so they only got to do half the story. They re- revived the franchise seven years later with Jigsaw, which I is not it it is a sequel it's not a reboot it is absolutely a sequel which is why right. we won't will not cover jigsaw on this podcast yeah. um because it is legitimately a sequel um whereas this is a full spin off like it is it, right. it is designed specifically to be its own thing although what i um, started to call it after i watched it was jigsaw year 1 i mean so when, yeah. once you watch once you watch jigsaw you know what i'm talking about but it's it's jigsaw year 1 it's okay. what it is okay um, but so the, so Jigsaw again, performs very poorly and the franchise sits dormant for a while. Chris Rock gets seated next to the head of Lionsgate at a wedding in Brazil and says, Hey, uh, I got an idea for, uh, for a Saw movie. I like those movies. I, I got an idea for one. And they're like, great. Uh, we'll bring you on as a lead actor, producer, and, uh, what the hell we'll let you co-write some stuff. Um, and so that's what happens. The idea that, you know, Chris Rock storms in saying, I'm going to save the Saw franchise. That's that's a false narrative. He he literally is like, hey, um, you know, uh, I like Saw. Maybe maybe that's a thing. Uh, and that's how we get Spiral. So I, I did I did want to preface it with that. The franchise had performed fairly poorly. Some would say it started to go off the rails toward the end. Like, I don't care for Hoffman as a character at all. 
No, he started to get on my nerves by the end of it. He was fine. Like he got on my nerves movies. in four. Like in four, I'm just going get off the screen, you jackass. Well, like, well, yeah. By the time he sort of stops, and this isn't really a spoiler because it's kind of obvious this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. The moment he starts going off script, right? And, like stops adhering to Jigsaw's mantra is when I was like, "Can we just get this guy out of here?" Like meanwhile i was saying that in like his first full outing i was just like bye buddy i don't want i do not want you here anymore why is this guy the guy i mean he's a discount sylvester stallone he looks like his face looks like he's been smacked in the head with a frying pan by a cartoon one too many times like yeah and then on on, on the other side of that i really hated uh the woman that played jigsaw's wife i don't think she can't really act her way out of the paper bag yeah, I mean, she's not a great actress. And and, and I'm going to be honest with you, Brett. That's part of the reason why I like this movie. Is it after after watching seven movies of like kind of budget performance and Tobin Bell? Because Tobin Bell is great in all of these. Oh, absolutely. Like, yes, yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that forward. Like Tobin Bell is great. But even the great actors in like the, the first movie and, and, and some of the other entries, even the good actors are going so ham that I'm just like, what are we doing here? Like what it what is this? Um, so that by the time you get to this movie, I'm just like, finally, some fucking acting. Like I was just so excited to see like and I mean, is Chris Rock great? No. Um, is he is he better than um uh what whatever his face is that's playing uh Hoffman through the bulk of the franchise? Fuck yes, hundred percent. But you know, that's I can at least that's give a pass. To him, just because his character Costas Mandalore, be... that's his name. Sorry. Yeah, Mandalore, really? That's his last name. Mandalore. It's it's a real oh, okay. Y instead of the second right. A, but yeah, right. I think this, it's this... I think it's pronounced the same. I don't know. This, this is not the way. Um, no, this I think is definitely because, not the way. Is because I mean I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just giving him too much of a benefit of the doubt. But Hoffman is supposed to be like a cold, careless character, which is how he seems to play him. That's definitely how his acting is being portrayed. He definitely, but there's no personality behind there, man. Like I need (laughs) something like you're the main character. We're going to build a bulk of this franchise around. I need, I need you to give me something, man. I need you to give me something. I know. And that, well, that's the thing too. I don't know if I'd call him the main character was built around that. It continues to be Jigsaw the whole time. Like Jigsaw's in the background of all of it. He is. But that's the main it. He's character. he's in the background, and he and Tobin Bell is first build in all of those. After the first one, he's first build in all of them. But it's after after he after Jigsaw canonically dies in three, he's always a presence in the background. But the whole franchise then becomes about the you know the one acolyte remaining after three, as far as we know. Um, who is, you know, propelling the narrative, as it were. Um, and and he is, for better or worse, I would say worse, the guy propelling the narrative forward. Jigsaw's pulling the strings. He's the one actually enacting the plan. He he is really the the character that the whole thing is built around. He's he's the new Jigsaw. He's the Michael Myers of it all. And I don't like it. I don't think it. I don't think he works in that role. And he's not I, I, meant to, and that's kind of the point they're built to. But I don't like him yeah. immediately. Like immediately, I'm like, "Fuck this guy! Get him off the screen." Well, I mean, there's there's a whole lot of characters that I'm just like, who's like Agent Strom, for example. I fucking hated that guy. He was supposed to be the good guy in the movies he's in, and my god, I yeah. hated him. Um, I, I, you know what? I believe it. I buy it. Here's the thing: I still would have preferred him to 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 Costas to Hoffman. Hmm. I mean, I, I, yeah, it, it's it's a definitely it's, everybody sucks here situation. Like, there's and and by the way, that guy, Agent Strom, that's uh, that's Luke from Gilmore Girls. So he's the guy pouring uh, the coffee in in Starhaven. Joins right the FBI. On. Never never watched Gilmore Girls. Um, oh, yeah, I understand still- some of those words. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty fun show. Uh, it's, it's the past 15 minutes has been Tucker shrugging the whole time. Uh, yeah. Just Tucker I doing his know. best impression of Steven during an Upsol video game corner episode. <laughs> I'm, I'm just casually, you know, casually listening because like, I don't want to spoil it too much because I am, you know, trying to, to get my saw on. Uh-oh. Yeah. Mine too. Oh, oh, gone. we lost, we lost Tucker. That man left. 
Yeah. Fuck like, this. I don't care about this franchise. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. There he is. Back. And we're back. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, in, so, the connections are pretty spotty, and I think Zencaster may be overloaded as a as on the whole, but because we normally don't have this problem, everything seems clear right now, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I guess let's um, we can do the plot in sixty. Why not? Yeah, let's do the plot in 60. So the, the plot in 60 seconds is the part of the show where we, the here assembled hosts of this show, will one of us will, anyway, will recount the plot of the movie that we're talking about, Spiral, from the Book of Saw, in 60 seconds or less. Or your pizza is free. Not your pizza, your podcast. Sorry, your podcast is free. Uh, and to decide which of us will be doing that, Brett will roll the D6 of Destiny. To determine which of us will be going. Brett, assign the sides and roll the die. Let's assign them like I always do by interest. I will be one and two. Steven will be three and four. Tucker will be five and six. Let's go. That is a three. Yes. Fuck. All right, so I will then be the one recounting. So one of you guys, I don't, I don't rightly care which one. Go ahead and put sixty seconds All on right. the clock, so I can oh, really good, good. I got it. recount Less the I plot. Have to do, I got it. Yeah, hold on, getting it. All right, your time starts whenever you want it to, I guess. Someone's killing cops in a very jigsaw esque fashion, and so. Uh, cop uh, Chris Rock is on the case and he's the only good cop in the precinct. He's the guy taken out. Uh, he, he ratted on a bad cop once who shot a guy in cold blood, who was a witness to a, a cop committing a crime. Uh, and so under a like statute eight or something, they can get away with fucking everything. So they did. Um, and so he hated by the rest of the homicide um, and he's got a new partner, but he doesn't want a new partner because he plays by his own rules. Uh, anyway, they're investigating the jigsaw killings. 30 seconds. So many people are dying, like so many people are dying, including a ton of cops, mostly cops. Let's be honest, it's all cops because uh, Jigsaw says a cab. Uh, and then we find out at the end uh, his partner dies. But surprise, he didn't because he's actually the Jigsaw killer the whole time um, because he was the son of the guy that uh, that crooked cop shot. Uh, and so uh, he ends up killing Chris Ten Rock's seconds. dad, who was uh, played by Samuel L. Jackson, uh, who was the the head of the force, who did a whole bunch of other shit under that statute. Uh, and so he dies and gets away, and then the guy gets away, and, and Chris Rock goes, game. "No!" And that's and that's the end. Uh, homeboy just leaves. He's just like deuces, and then credits. That's like, that's the, the end of the movie, with the, the exception of, the of movie, with the exception of Game Over. The words Game Over. That's how all of these fucking movies end, though. <laughs> Except for Jigsaw. Duh, man, Jigsaw doesn't end with game over. Even though it should, there is a point at the end where he should say game over, and that's not the line he says, and I was pissed. Yeah, like, right. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Why did There's he another one over? that, I forget which one, but there's another one that also doesn't end with game over, and it should. Yeah. But this I don't one, remember this which one, one, though. This one, this one was just, this one ended just stupid. Like, you mean the SWAT team doesn't notice the dude going down in the elevator? Like they're not going to stop him to question what the fuck is going on. And the way Sam Jackson was lit, anybody that was paying attention and to be a SWAT team member in that situation, you have to be hyper focused on everything that's going on around you. They would notice. They would fucking notice that he was being puppeteered by like wires and he was in some kind of contraption. They would have noticed that way before he even raised his arm. Because, yeah, the lights come on. They they have enough time when they walk in to notice that Samuel L. Jackson is the one hanging there. They have enough time. Yeah. But they don't. No. And they shoot him so many times. All the times. So many. Just, like, you, you shoot somebody maybe like three or four times. That's probably good. No, but you know why they shoot him so many times, Tucker? Because I don't know, but they empty because it looks every one of them on camera is why they shoot every one of them emptied a full clip in the Sammy J. Mm. Yeah, they did. They really did. And he's just standing there. He's just there. He's not standing. He's suspended. But yeah, like you've already shot him at this point. Any threat has been neutralized. Why are you still shooting this guy for like ten seconds? But that's the that's the point of the movie. It's it's. It's police brutality. It's overkill. Oh. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. No, the, the point of the movie is 
police brutality. It's overkill. It's doing too much when you don't have to, particularly to a black man. I mean, this comes out in 2021 in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement. And it's absolutely responding to that. It is 100% a response to that. Yeah, but like, are they really like full heartedly responding to it? Or are they just kind of that's, throwing it that, in there because that's what's fucking going on? Because that's what it seemed like to me. I mean, it didn't seem like a message. It didn't seem like a political stance. It just said it seemed it's like, certainly oh, the intention. It's certainly the intention. Because compared to six, which is making a big statement about ham fisted statement, yeah. ham fisted statement about like medical insurance and the pharmaceutical company in America, the, the health care like, system healthcare that is broken system. AF. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's what six is fucking about. And compare yeah. it to this and like, it just doesn't, 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 it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. That it just doesn't work. It's just, it's, it doesn't, it's I get, I mean, I get it. But like, thank you for trying, but also right. I, get, I, get, I got a lot of questions. Cause like if, if he turned in that crooked cop 12 years ago, why are they, they're still, like that's really ham fisted. Like even after twelve years, they're still giving this guy shit for turning in a crooked cop. Like twelve years I mean, later, they're still treating him like garbage. Come I, on. I'm sorry, Brett. Do you want subtlety from your franchise where people are set up again in elaborate traps where their body parts are ripped from their bodies? Kinda, because I mean, <laughs> like, because I mean, you say six was ham fisted. I don't. I mean. I don't it, know. It was ham-fisted. very heavy handed, man. Uh, but I don't. But not. I don't know. There's. There's a difference I can't put my finger on between the two. And maybe it's just because the narrative isn't as, it seems weird for me to say it, a, a saw narrative is tight, but like, it, it's, not as, <laughs> it's, it's not as, it's not as like tight and concise and clear, clear maybe is the word I'm looking for. It's, it's not clear in the narrative, like, because they're, it's more painted like they don't really paint it in this like police brutality light. It's more like, well, there's just crooked cops like mm-hmm. and there, there's a code and like it's not really like police brutality. It's just like cops are cops are bad. Um, I mean, a cab, right? Sure. I think for me, that message get, gets a little lost for me because uh, Chris Rock's character, Zeke, his name's Zeke, right? Ezekiel. Yeah. yeah. Um he's the good cop. He's the one that has the moral high ground because he will rat you out if you're being a dirty cop or a corrupt cop. And I'm way into that. Yeah. Like I want him to be my favorite character. I want to enjoy this character and follow him through this film. But the character of Zeke is such a malicious asshole. Such an unlikable fucking character. I, I, this if whole you... movie, like he's supposed to be, he's the moral center of it, but he's such a fucking prick. Like the whole time, every mm. word that he says is just so prickish. He's such a dick, dude. If you want to play a fun drinking game with this movie, take a shot every time Chris Rock calls someone a fucking asshole. I, wow. I feel like. <laughs> Do it. That if you dangerous, wanna, actually. You, you you might die of alcohol poisoning. I don't know. I mean, I will not first, take responsibility if you one, do. One of his first scenes is talking about how like you, you women women are bitches and like right. His, yeah. his partner corrects him and he's like, "Well, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that to them in person." I'm not saying that to a woman. I'm saying that to you, saying, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, that doesn't make it any better, my guy. But um, but again, that's the point of the movie: is all cops are bastards. That's the point. Then even don't paint the this ones. guy as uh, yeah. Even the good ones, like I guess that's what it's supposed to be. But like we need, we need someone to root for. Like, and I mean, I get yeah, like, honestly nobody. saying that out loud. I mean, I guess you're supposed to be rooting for the guy who's copycatting Jigsaw, which is the I mean, moral is it, argument always around that, a series of movies. Like, right. I was going to say, isn't that the point of the franchise? Is that you're, you're rooting for Jigsaw? You're rooting for Jigsaw, and you shouldn't be. Is, exactly. Is, uh, well, and that's that. That is my problem with most horror franchises. To get on this, this old chestnut again, but like the whole point of like long running franchises where there is a central killer, the point is you're there for the bad guy. You want to see that guy kill as many teenagers as possible. Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, cut those kids up. Those bitches had it coming. 
Like that's, and, and so my problem with Jigsaw is, and I think I love him as a villain. He's a super complex villain. And re- I think, and, and, and I love, he's also a sympathetic villain. He is. And I love my, one of my favorite scenes in any of these movies is in three where Amanda finally starts calling him on his shit. Um, like toward the end of that movie. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. And you should say it. Um, and, and, but, but then, you know, in later films, it becomes about the revenge. And so, but then you, and then you, your killer then again has the moral high ground jigsaw, the guy in the background, even though he's dead, the whole franchise lives in his shadow. He is the, again, the morally superior one because he's the one who, you know, kills for, I've never killed anyone. These traps kill everyone for me. Like that becomes his argument, even though you're the one putting them in the traps, dude. Like, yeah, the traps are killing them, but you're the one putting them in there. So, well, mm. and that's, <clears throat> and two things. One, that's that's sort of the problem you notice with Jigsaw's logic over time. Right. Like again, this is one of those things that if you just watch them, you know, once a year, every year, and you don't really follow all of it closely, he's criminally insane. Yeah, he's he's you know you can easily get behind his moral argument. Right. <clears throat> but if you watch them all together, you start to be like, no, this guy, like he, he thinks he has the moral high ground, but like he's a madman. Yeah, and he says that he gives them a way out that his games are winnable, but like at what cost? His, well, no. And his clues are cryptic as fuck. That's like, it. no, nobody like, yes, you're giving them a clue that could help them. But in a dire situation like this, you think they're going to be thinking clear enough to figure out one of your cryptic clues that a normal right. person under normal calm circumstances probably wouldn't be able to figure out. Sure. No. And right. And don't, and don't get me started on the number of times I was like, that's not enough time to do this task. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, uh, 60 <laughs> seconds is a big, and, and here's the thing. It's either 60 seconds or it's a or fucking minutes. hour. It's, yeah. it's, it, there's no in between except for the very first movie where it's just like, I don't know, figure it out. Um, or no, it's like, it's like three hours or four hours or something in the first movie. It's like a before, long fucking before, time. Before six, he has to kill, kill him before six o'clock, which I don't know what time it is when that starts. I forget. But. Yeah. I Yeah. But there's, there is, there is a ticking clock, but the the rest of those movies make it literal. Yeah. And I think two is like 12 hours or something like that, but I, I, I forget. Sure. Um, but so, yeah, like it, if you watch these all in succession, you do realize that like he, he is, he is the bad guy. You can't give him any moral high ground. Now, Again, I keep coming back to six. Maybe six is my favorite. But like six is the one where like that dude has the high ground. <laughs> that entire movie. Yeah. Like no, and you can't say otherwise about what he says about the healthcare system. No, it's and again, anyone who's and again, if you don't understand why he has the moral high ground there, you've never dealt with the American healthcare yeah. system. And yeah. lucky you, quite frankly, because yeah. holy shit, it's a fucking nightmare. It's it's a fucking quagmire. Yeah. So, so yeah, the rest of the time, though, you can't really get behind him, unfortunately. Do you sympathize right. with him? Sure, absolutely. A lot of sh- bad shit happened to him in a short amount of time. But here's the thing. There are um, a lot of sympathetic villains, but that doesn't mean you root for them. Right. Like, right. I, like Black Panther, just to take a very recent, very obvious example of a movie that has a very sympathetic villain. You absolutely understand where this dude is coming from. You get his perspective. You get his point of view. You completely disagree with his methods, like right, mm. right, right attitude, wrong method. Um, and it's one of the few movies that I know where the hero actually takes something from the villain. He's like, you know what? You've got a point. Um, and he does. He absolutely has a point. He's just going about it the wrong way. And I think Jigsaw is very much the same kind of a villain. He has a point. His methods are questionable at best. Yeah, and you're really truly only rooting for him when the person he's testing is actually a shitty human being. And look, um, there are a lot of shitty human beings. That is a dark ass franchise. The Shaw franchise is dark it, as shit. I get yeah. people who don't like it. I do. It's fucking dark as hell. Yeah, and 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 also when you think about that, I mean they, I mean they imply it through most of the series, but they just straight out say it in seven like mm-hmm. there's all sorts of traps and games going on that we never see exactly he's been doing it for years i mean he's he in the universe of this movie he's like the most prolific serial killer of all time of all time he's, he would have to be he's he's on the cover of magazines there are you know the main character of seven is a guy who 
you know, claims he survived the trap and he's a best selling author because he wrote a book about it. Right. His like, his ex wife wrote a book about him too. Like it's there um, it is it, it um, for the true crime generation, he is probably one of the most obvious targets in a way that like I don't know. There, there are so many uh, like true crime shit out there, but like there would be, I'm honestly surprised the Saw franchise has not done dealt with true crime podcasts yet. The way that like the 2018 Halloween did, um, where you've got like a true crime, uh, maybe that's maybe Saw X is going to have something like that. I don't know. I mean, it definitely needs to, because as prolific as he seems to be in, in this universe, even 10 years later in Jigsaw, right. Or they still know who he is. Mm -hmm. And like people talk about him still. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the other thing I was going to say, though, which I realized is that when I talked about tight narrative in in uh, in seven and not this one is the. The um, what's the word I'm looking for, the the reason mm. for everything he's doing all the for the game the motive, the motive, that's the word. Mm. Um, the motive is is clear. Uh <laughs> Tucker's doing physical comedy. I think this is the <laughs> longest stretch of this podcast we've we've ever gone without Tucker saying anything. My mic has been muted for 15 minutes. <laughs> I just want you to know that. Oh my god, man! I I, I should have we we should have been like, hey Tucker, watch a few more of these movies before. We, I was honestly like just now. I was thinking, you know, I wonder if I went over there and turned on my Xbox and started playing Control, like if they'd notice. <laughs> I mean, like, we'd notice. Will they get away with it? Like, here's the thing: we would keep talking and only call you out on it. Probably when we came to a point where we'd want your input on something, you'd run over, unmute your mic, say something, then run back and keep playing uh, control. Hey, I'm into that, you guys. I'm I way had a feeling that. you might be. I just find uh, it weird that you don't seem to have anything to say. I just, I it was a shit burger movie, man. Like. The gore was good, but it was too mean spirited for me to really enjoy it. And like the movie was ugly, the colors were dark. There wasn't a lot of. Uh, I didn't really like the production design that much, honestly. Oh, see, I, I thought, thought the production it, design was fun, and I loved the no, like the more adventurous so camera shit that this movie does. No, like, it was. It's eh. like they were trying to do seven, but digital. That's what it looked like. It looked like digital seven, and that made me want to fucking puke. Honestly, I'm mean, honestly says, you pr you probably won't like some of the later entries in this franchise. Then, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, it does. It this movie does give off budget seven vibes. I mean, uh, I was gonna like that is that is what I got bad. most from this movie is like Chris Rock is the Morgan Freeman and Max Minghella is the Brad Pitt, like it, to the point where he's like, oh hey, here's my family, here's my wife, here's my kid. Um, like, oh, you know, the, the, being a cop, not great for relationships. Like, that's the whole Morgan Freeman. See our previous episode on Seven, by the way. That's a good app. Um, yeah, but like, right. <laughs> I, I you take the Stephen Fox with a guarantee is a good app. Um, yeah. it, it, look, we know. Uh, <laughs> But like th this movie is it, it is giving off the most seven vibes of any movie in this franchise. And the first movie is definitely it just in look and feel very inspired by seven. Like this whole franchise owes an incredible debt of gratitude to the seven to, to the movie seven. I almost said the seven franchise, but I'm like, wait, that's oh, not a franchise. I don't know if I'd say the whole franchise. Well, you didn't seven. say you didn't see eight or nine, Steven. You didn't see those bitches. <laughs> no, because they were never <laughs> made. You, see, you, didn't see, you didn't see the first six. What the fuck? Right, yeah, the prequel six, dude, that came out after eight. <laughs> but before nine, it's a weird timeline yes, thing. You wouldn't yes. get it. It's a Jason X sort of thing, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that it. Yeah, I. I don't. I forgot my. I completely lo dropped that thread. Well, I, don't, I don't. I don't know if I'd say the whole franchise is owes a lot to seven. Maybe. But I mean, if the whole franchise is. Go, piggybacking off of the first one and the first one owes a lot to seven it stands to reason the whole franchise owes a debt to seven i mean i fucking guess by the transitive property uh, yay uh, math for the win uh, never thought i'd hear myself say that yeah uh, well here we are <laughs> i would not call it a strong influence on the first one though i would say only Probably the uh, production design and cinematography would be the only things that and, I would, and maybe the lighting a bit. I would, I would say general overall tone as well. I think owes a lot to seven and the fucking twist. I mean, uh, I mean, I guess. Yeah. Now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because all those people in seven were put in situations that I guess are kind of mm-hmm. similar to like in some ways to putting someone in like a death trap or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, a bit a more yeah. than I thought, but still not a lot. Yeah. The say. more that we're talking through it, the more I see what you're saying. But like the first one, though, like I don't know. If but again, are... transitive property. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. If the first one's influenced, the rest of them have to be. I fucking guess. Uh, sure. But... <laughs> Sure. Uh, I mean, look, you win. All that's, right. That's all you had to say, right? <laughs> that is all you had to say. You got me. Mark it on the board. Game over. I guess. Game over. Um, win, live or die. Make your choice. Um. I mean, can we? Man, just I love Tobin Bell. Just... He's so. I'm. I am glad that we're getting a new movie where he actually gets to do shit. Because because we're again we're rewinding the timeline with Saw X. So. Yeah. This is supposed uh, to take place, I think, between one and two? Or between two and three? Probably two and three. We're not yeah. to it yet, but the video games take place between one oh, and two. I was just about to say <laughs> the video games take place between one and two. Brad, and you they are, I mean, and it's maybe your thing. they're canon. Wouldn't you know it? It's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's right here. While you guys were talking for 15 minutes, I was looking at the, the Wikipedia articles on the two video games. I I'm didn't realize there were video games until now. just I'm now. I'm basically a Saw video game scholar. Which, we're not you know, giving you the video game corner, Tucker. Well, no, I was going to say... Want it. I don't want it. Oh, well, I mean, because you haven't said much, I was going to let you do the video game corner just no, to dude. give you something to no, do. Dude. I, You know, I will sit over there with you, but that's your corner, you know. Tucker's taking the Brett Wright role in this episode where he just kind of like chimes in when he needs to and just kind of like sits Yo, back and enjoys the conversation. The last couple episodes, I have been a complete fucking spaz. I mean, you I and me this. both, sir. I know this because I am listening them. to these entire episodes when I edit them. So I know how much of a spaz I am. And sometimes, you know, it's okay for me to sit back. This one's not really my wheelhouse. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't have a lot to say about it except for this movie fucking sucks. The only thing, the only reason I have as much to say about it as I do is because I watched all these this week. Like I, I can't imagine this would have been a really fucking short episode if I hadn't watched these movies this week because I'd had nothing to contribute. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad I have somebody to bounce this shit off of, or else I just would have been rambling. So right, yes, that's great. Thank you for that. <laughs> no, thank you for giving you know me what? the idea to do this. And sometimes, sometimes it's nice. Uh, when I sit back and listen to you guys talk, it reminds me of the old days when I wasn't a host <laughs> and I was just a young boy listening to those disenfranchised boys every Thursday. So I guess, yeah. like, and now you're one of the disenfranchised boys. It's, it's like uh, yeah. what uh, past and future guest of the podcast, Landon Negrastis, has said. Like he would just forget. He's like, "Oh, I thought I, I forgot I was actually a guest. I was just <laughs> listening to the episode." I, right. It happens. That chemistry's yeah. strong, boys. Sometimes that's, even I can't pierce through it. There's a look. You can pierce through anything, Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's why we started doing this in the first place. Is we're just good friends who love to talk about movies and and argue about movies a lot of times too. So Fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, these differing opinions. Like the fact that I think this movie's garbage. Steven doesn't, you know? I, I liked I it. I had it a good sucks. time. It's really bad. Like, like, it doesn't seem like, for, for somebody who claimed they were a fan of the franchise, Chris Rock, you certainly doesn't don't seem to have watched any of them. Um, <laughs> like, Well, hey, to be fair, the people who wrote it, didn't they write other Saw movies? And the director directed like three Saw movies, right? Yeah, so Darren Lynn Bowsman who... is the stalwart well, yeah. of the franchise. He's directed. Yeah, he's... He directed two, three, and four. Yeah. So I mean, but so the... I don't. I don't know if I would lay that squarely on Chris Rock's shoulders because he doesn't even have a writing credit on the film. We uh, know that he co-wrote it with the guys who wrote it, but he doesn't have an actual credit on the film. Because see, I thought I had heard that this wasn't originally a Saw script to begin with. They threw the saw shit in there. So maybe that's misinformation. I mean, that is, I that's think, what happened feels, with honestly. Saw Two, as I recall. Because it does. It feels like yeah. it doesn't feel like a Saw movie. It feels like a. It like feels a, like a La Llorona is what it fucking feels like. Yeah, it feels like a like a, a a movie where there's crooked cops and somebody's come on to start taking them down, and Chris Rock's character has to investigate, get investigated, and figure it out. 
And then there's a twist at the end that has been his partner this whole time, even though it's a terrible twist because he, why didn't they show his game? Yo. He's just dead. That's strange. Um, we're just going to, uh, you know, we're just going to say that, no, we didn't show his, his track. And I was going to say, that's, that's the biggest giveaway in the entire movie that, that of, of the reveal at the end that it is, it's the partner. And- and that's supposed to throw you off the scent, but it only it, solidifies what you've known since that motherfucker first walked on screen. You guys, because you I know movies, you've seen Stall movies before. You know how these go. I haven't, but like what? <laughs> I watched, yes, you have. You've said you watched the I've first. I've seen a three. couple when they came out, like fifteen still. to twenty years ago. Tucker and uh, the Immortal Words of Akon still counts. I don't know if I'd say that that year long ago. You might as well not have watched them. Especially if you don't like them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot what my original point was, though, so you can continue, Steve. I didn't really know that you had one, so. I did. Well, well, (laughs) well, I'll continue with mine and see if it draws your memory. Yeah, there you go. Um, Yeah, so, like, yeah, if you've you've seen any Saw movies, well, maybe not the first one, but uh, because it doesn't have the same tropes that get popular later. Right. Um, it, like you, you see it coming a mile away, and then he disappears. Like, first of all, that's what I mean again by the loose narrative is like he. It seem he seems to get he's the third victim, mm-hmm. and so like he's dead pretty fucking fast within an, within the first hour of the movie. He's dead so like, like fifty like, minutes into this bitch. So like you barely get any time. To, it, it's really like they they threw him in there like okay he's the killer we need to set up we need to set up all the scenes that we flash back to at the end really fast when the theme song's playing like we um, always do because it's a like song we always movie. do we have to do this it's a song movie um, so we they they give him a few time. scenes they give him a few scenes to set up his dialogue for those quick flash you know, quick cut flashbacks at the end to reveal he's been this way the whole time um, and then they kill him and they we only like like you get his motive at the end but like it it just it feels so like paper thin Mm. and like just like weak and and i i don't think i don't think you have to be a saw fan to call this early either because you guys i'm not shitting you last night at work I was talking to my friend Marv about having to watch this stupid fucking movie that I hadn't even watched yet. And I was like, look, I'm going to call it right now. It's called what? Spiral from the Book of Saw. Okay, so that means we got a copycat killer. So wait, it's about a cop? All right. It's probably his fucking partner. And there, you go. and there it is. So as soon as that motherfucker walked in the room, I was like, yeah, like I have I called this 24 hours ago before seeing a fucking frame of it. Like <laughs> Because they do nothing, like, in, at least in other Saw movies, they try to do little things to sort of throw you off. and They do. Red herrings to make you think other people are maybe the killer. They don't, that's the other thing. They give you no red herrings for anyone else to make Mm-mm. you suspect who this could possibly be. But it's a Saw movie, so you know there's going to be a twist. Right. You know it's, it's, there's going to be somebody at the end that is in this main cast you've been following who it's going to be. Right. But there's, like... They kill off all the main characters that get any speaking. I guess the that other detective guy, the older one that didn't die, but is kind of like antagonistic. So oh, the, the the you're too close to this. Yeah. Yeah. The, I guess they're trying to make you think that maybe it's him, but like they don't even do a good job of that. I was going like, to say it's it's never inherent within the, the narrative at all. Like it's 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 if that's what they're trying to do, it's not successful. The no. method of, of presenting a red herring in this movie just seems to be, uh, for me, when I watched it, it seemed like it was just you'd have a scene of someone getting frustrated or angry about something. Mm. And the way that they framed it, you were supposed to be like, oh, but what if that guy's him? Because look at him being mad about something. Mm-hmm. And it was just, oh, God, but it, it but if you guys, it really fucking sucks. If you stop and think about it for ten seconds, you absolutely know it can't be him because of the thing he's mad about. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it doesn't it doesn't. There's like like don't get me wrong. There there are plot holes and things you raise your eyebrow at throughout this entire franchise, as there are and with a lot of with movies. anything. Yeah, and like and, and 
And that's another appreciative thing I appreciate about the Saw franchise is when there are plot holes, later they try to fill those plot holes in. They Sometimes absolutely do. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it, it does not. It does. Sometimes it hey, doesn't, at least they so. tried, and that's, that's they tried a lot, man. Yeah, that's, that's really true. is saying a lot. And Most that's where the wonky well. timeline helps them out a lot is they're able to go back and fix a lot of that shit. Yeah. And, like I, and, I, one of the things I loved about, um, I think it was six was the the salvation of uh, the salvation of Amanda, like the 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 fact that they kind of gave her, um. I don't know. They, I forget the the word that I had thought of, but like they, they kind of redeemed her a little bit. Redemption. That's the word. They, they kind of redeemed Amanda they a little do. bit in six. Yeah. yeah did they, they do. did they take her by the hand and make her understand? Absolutely. Did in she Boston. Looked, did, I think did, it was in Boston did, that that happened. Did he, yeah. Did they look her in the eyes and make her realize? <laughs> Jigsaw did, yeah. Nice. Okay, good. Just In wondering. Boston, yeah. For no reason, yeah. For no reason whatsoever. <laughs> but, Just okay. normal uh, questions. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, we keep coming back to six. Is six my favorite? What the fuck? Like, we keep mentioning six. We I mean, I brought up six it. this time. You guys. But... Well, yeah, you but guys. Like... We haven't done a distant five chise in a long time. And I'm about to watch this whole series in like a short, as short amount of time as possible. Do we want to do a top five Saw movies? We're going to do a distant five chised, but it's not going to be a top five. It's going to be, we're going to rank the whole series. It's still going to be distant five chised, but it's going to be like on a very special episode of distant five. I was, I was actually thinking like top five, top five traps. I think that'd be pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. I, oh, but I want to rank the movies. You guys, we could, sure, you know, been talking we could about that. that. You, you're trying to figure it out. You're like, I don't know if six is my favorite. Like, I thought that well, would be cool. Let's shout back to the the very first episode of Distant Five Chives. I was about to say where we did three top fives in one episode in one hour. What? Like, we yeah. cram that shit in. So, I that's what I was going to suggest, Brett, is that we do like a like a, a saw centric episode, like we did with the the first Distant Five Chives. So that that's my recommendation. But yeah. my my vote is to rank the entire series, but that's only because I'm getting ready to watch the entire series, most mm-hmm. of them for the first time. So I'm really psyched. I've got them all ranked on Letterbox right them, now. So you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to make my ranking list. Yeah, make but that I'm list on Letterbox because open... I want to look at that. I'm also open to other saw based ideas for a distant five chise. So anyway, band meeting over. I was going to say, if you want to know what distant five chise is, <laughs> check out patreon.com slash distant Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know what else we want to say about spiral is, is, is not good. Um, I liked what did it, you like though. about it, Steven? I love yeah. what you liked what you about like? it. Please. I mean, I don't know. Again, after being in a wasteland with these movies for like two weeks, and again, there are things that I liked about all of these movies. I'm not going to say that this was a, an overall miserable experience. I I tend to, the horror that I like tends to not go the gore route. I tend to not like gore. Um, and after three, or no, really after two, the gore gets really intense. There's like no gore in the first one there's like you see like some blood when he starts to cut his leg off at the end but that's about it yeah, you um, do that scene like four movies later you're seeing every gory detail of his exactly his leg yeah. Yeah. exactly and that's that's why that's 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 what kept me away from and that's why you only recommended the first two to me brett is because you're like it's good it's really gore torture porny after that um and it, yeah. the term it, torture porn was coined because of this franchise yeah. right and it it well that possible yeah Oh, yeah, right, hostile, hostile. I think much more applies. Cranked it up hostile, hostile goes with like the nudity shit too, which is also mm-hmm. like this franchise doesn't do as much. You get a little bit of it here and there, but not as yeah, much. It's sporadic, not a whole lot. No, like I think Future. the first one has a guy, a naked guy in a room. The f- fourth, third one has the naked lady in the freezer, and then I mm-hmm. think you see a titty pop out in seven after a kill, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a disembodied titty. So what the fuck are we even doing with it? Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I, I I the acting, with the exception of Tobin Bell, the acting in these movies is not particularly strong. And I am someone who is drawn to good acting. So seeing, I I and this is gonna sound really fucking mean, but seeing actual actors 
like portraying these like these characters that went a long way for me and now that we're talking about the story i might have to knock it down a peg or two um i might have to dock it a star just because you're right there's a lot of obvious plot holes but as i'm watching it i'm having a good time one of my favorite elements of the first movie is the police procedural element i really really enjoyed that and i'm not Again, since I'm not a gore guy, I'm not going into this for the trap. So I loved the, we're trying to figure this out. I loved the echoes of Seven that we get through this movie. I thought that was really cool. I I quite enjoyed that. Is it obvious? Yes. Did I peg it in almost instantly? Absolutely. Did it keep me from enjoying the movie? No. Um, like, I still had a good time. Is it derivative and lame? Yes. Echoes of the movie, Seven, not Saw Seven. Oh, not the Saw Seven. I was like, what? Right. I'm confused. All right. Um, but no, I, I, I did. I had a good time with this movie. I, for, in, in, you know, in spite of myself, I really enjoyed it. Like there, for me, seeing Samuel L. Jackson and Chris Rock have a conversation in a room for a minute and a half covers a multitude of sins, I guess, um, is is kind of how I look at it. Sam Jackson is responsible for entire half a star in my rating. BT dubs. I bought, He's the I bought only it. thing about this movie that I gave a fuck about. And I just watched Secret Invasion, so I know that he can suck. But See, he, when I think of he, Sam Jackson was, sucking, I think of the spirit. Frank Miller's Will Eisner's he spirit. Fucking, he fucking showed up in this movie. And he's he did. the only fucking one. He's, he is really fucking good in this movie. He's not even in it that long. He, he, I know he's got that a is few the, scenes, but that is the greatest really the travesty of this movie is he is, he's kind of filling not in terms of story function, but in terms of just like presence, he's filling the Danny Glover role. He's, he's the, the veteran that you call in to play a minor role in the background. You probably only got him for like a week, week and a half. He's going to show up. He's going to do his shit. He's going to do it well. And he's going to take, collect that paycheck and go. And that's a hundred percent what Sam Jackson is doing in this movie. And I and the am other, here for it. The other half star of my rating spoilers uh, (laughs) is how they brought Sam Jackson into it. Because for me, like in a cop movie, when somebody talks about their dad and they're talking to them with other cops and like living up to them or whatever, right. That person's dead usually. Mm -hmm. And so like, I just assume we were usually killed in the line of duty. Right. Yeah. I thought Sam Jackson's character was dead. And then when he showed up, I was like, wait, is he like, is he Dexter's dad? Is he a phantom? Like, is he in his mind? And I'm like, no, he's, he's still alive. Like I just Mm -hmm. assumed he was dead. Like I'm the idiot. And that's the other half star. This movie gets for fucking fooling me for 20 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) It was only 20 minutes. Slow fucking clap for that because it was brilliant. But like the rest of the movie sucked. Right. Uh, but no, that, I mean, to answer your question, that's, that's what I enjoyed about this movie. Like, you know, is it by any other standards? Is it a great movie? Probably not. But by saw standards, is it a good movie? Yeah, I'd say it is. No, it isn't. Well, Well. and that's where we differ. Mileage may vary, I suppose. And that's, but that's, that's the case with movies, man. Art is subjective. That's how art works, yeah. You get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's like the cave on Dagobah. What do you, what, 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 What's in there? Only what you take with you. Farts. So, yeah. Yeah. Big stinky farts. <laughs> Just like this movie. Did this movie make any money, though? Oh, hold God, on, not. Hold on, Wait a minute. There's a corner oh, sorry. over here we got to visit first. Oh, I, we were talking about that really damn curious. corner. Yeah, I was really curious. Let's hop well, we'll, on over there. We'll get there, Tucker. We'll get there. So Saw the video game comes out October 6, 2009, which uh, I forget when the first movie came out. I should know that. Oh, geez. Like 2002, 2003, 2003, solid 2004, I'm going to say. Okay. So this one, the, the video game comes out well into the movie franchise, um, but this game canonically takes place between Saw 1 and 2. Um, as it turns out, Detective David Tapp did not die from his gunshot wound in the first movie. Uh, Jigsaw finds him, helps him recuperate, heals him up, and then throws him into a trap. Um, he throws him into an asylum, 
um, where he is tasked with, uh, much like you know, in the, the the kind of the trope that happens later in the the franchise is there is one character that um, Jigsaw is running through a game. That's the difference between a game and a trap. Um, he's running him through a whole game where he has to save mul- multiple people he's associated with from their own respective traps. Um, and this and this ranges from like Detective Singh's wife um, to uh, Oswald McGillicuddy, who was the guy that we um, who coined the term Jigsaw in the in the newspapers. Hell of a name, too. Yeah, and then uh, there's also the guy that they saved from uh, the screwdriver trap um, when they find Jigsaw's hideout. There, that guy's there. Um, and and also also Amanda, Amanda's the first one I believe. Um, who she's you know she's a fake out. She's there to run the tra- run the game herself, but she's in the first trap because he doesn't know any better. And in this part of the timeline, we didn't know she was an apprentice yet. Oh. Um, I mean, in the movie timeline, yes, we knew that already years before. But yeah, at this yeah. point in the timeline, nobody knew that. Um, yeah, this came out like around the time of Saw 4, right? Yeah. So basically, you know, he, he gets all the way through. Um, I think the the probably the coolest bit of narrative is the interactions he has with Detective Singh's widow. Um you know, like that's that's just some good storytelling there. Um and it also has multiple endings. So And a sequel. And a sequel. Yeah, we'll get to the sequel. Um So basically what Jigsaw has been trying to do is teach Tap about his obsession and making him let go of his obsession with Jigsaw that kind of ruined his life. Um so they open the front jigsaw opens the front door of the asylum and um or there's two doors there's a freedom door and a truth door the freedom door leads outside um and it also frees it opens it frees him and everybody else inside um tap returns to his apartment um reviews the newspaper clippings all the stuff he's been obsessed with um but jigsaw's free to you know conduct the rest of his his tests because Tap commits suicide because of he, he can't overcome his obsession ultimately. Um, wow. It's dark. Um, the darker one that I think, and this is in the canon one. Apparently, you find newspaper clippings in two that make the freedom ending canon. Um, but the truth door canon, I think, is much more in line with Saw. Um, so if you choose the truth door, Tap. Uh, pursues somebody who he thinks is Jigsaw, um, catches them, brutally beats the shit out of them, but then realizes um, it's Detective Singh's wife. And then and she was in her own game where she was tasked with keeping Tap alive and making sure he followed the rules. Wow. Because he had kidnapped their son. That's kind of rad. Yeah. Was that game any good, and then, though? And like any... that from the first movie, right? Uh, no, this is the game, the first game. No, but I mean in a similar function to Zep in the first movie. Oh yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Like a um, like an apprentice that's not an apprentice, just a patsy. It's mm-hmm. you know, they're in their own game working for him. Um, right. But it's good. So it, it it gets cooler. I really dig the the non canon ending. Um, because like he'd also sewn her mouth shut so she couldn't tell Tap what was going on. Um. So. And then, so in, in the process of after he beats her and she's running away, she in the process of running away, she runs through a door rigged with a shotgun and kills her in the same way he killed Detective Singh in the movie. Woof. Um, and but then, um, the then Tap suffers a mental breakdown from all of this and gets placed in a mental asylum. So he's That's still fair. alive. Hmm. But I feel like that is much more in line with how a Saw movie would end. Like the guy, yes, Brett. Yeah, he can't. But is it? Is it? Sorry, canon? please go ahead. 
I was gonna ask you if it canon? was. I was gonna ask you if it was canon, but like I kept thinking you were done, but then you weren't, and I like, straight up wanted to respect your words and shit. Oh, thank so, thank you, like, thank you. I appreciate you know, that. Um, trying to let you do your thing, you know. But yes, in, in the words of YouTube channel Secret Galaxy, is it canon? Is it, um, Brett? It is canon. Yes. Um, wow. The the freedom ending where he 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 chooses to leave and let go of his obsession. Um, turns out he doesn't, and he kills himself. Um, yeah. but so that that's the canon ending. So you know, Detective Tap ends up dying anyway. So, but well, that's go. what happens. Um, so then we go into Saw Two: Flesh and Blood. Um, this one is uh, follows the uh, son of Detective Tap, Michael Tap. Um who is trying to figure out, you know, he thinks my dad could never commit suicide. Why did he do that? Um, so he's trying to investigate. Previous to that, um, in a little like bit of a prologue, um, we have a different guy who is in the, the Venus flytrap uh, trap from the beginning of Saw 2. Um, the mask with the nails inside of it um, that closes on both sides. Right. The, the reverse, reverse bear trap. Uh, it's called the Venus flytrap, but yes. I know. It, it's like an uh, Iron Maiden kind of thing. Yeah, that too. But for your head, right? Um, so we, we we go through him, and he has a chance at the end of his prologue section to sacrifice himself for a stranger or save himself. Mm. Um, and this guy's a former drug addict, so you know he he doesn't have a good reputation. So so you get to decide which one he does. Um, over the course of the game, um, Michael Tech Tap's son goes to various locations, tracking down different people. He he runs into his own game that Jigsaw has set up, where he's talking to different people who are all related to John Kramer and him in one way or another. Um, and it turns out the thing, one thing they have, all have in common, which is always a thing in the games, is that they were part of a big covered up drug ring. Um, but uh, Michael ends up saving them all, but they all end up dying anyway later for other reasons, story related. Um, and then we get to the end where there's another multiple ending, split ending. Um, if you chose the path of blood, which means you you sacrificed, um, or no, you you saved yourself. The path of blood is you saved yourself. Um, uh, basically uh, Michael ends up getting crushed to death by an elevator um, and the other guy that was alive that was like I think the former head of police that was covering up the drug ring um, gets killed by a falling scythe like trap and you, you get the classic game over at the end of the game from Jigsaw. Um, if you chose to, and this is interesting, but I don't think it would be canon. Um, if you choose to sacrifice uh, yourself for the stranger at the beginning, um, instead of crushing Michael, the ele- he'll get to the elevator, he'll play a tape, uh, claiming that Jigsaw and him are similar. They both like to give justice to a world of criminals. We're not so different, and, you and I. And then Michael is looking at two doors. One leads to freedom and the chance to use the evidence found by his father to print the story of Jigsaw and the drug cartel he just exposed. The other door reveals a pig head costume and an offer to help people see the truth inside themselves. He could become a Jigsaw apprentice. Um, If you go with that ending, the choice that Michael makes is not revealed to the player. The game ends before he chooses a door. Mm. So um, that is how the second game ends, but the second game didn't do so great. uh, So we never got a third one. Mm. that's it that's all of them um and the second one now saw two uh flesh and blood is it canon maybe it It doesn't say um it seems like it is uh just because the first one's canon and this one is tied i was gonna say yeah it follows the first one and the first one's canon so it kind of has to sort of maybe yeah and it doesn't it doesn't do anything that would contradict any of the continuity of the movies so yes i would say that's convenient that's why i think the 
the does he become an apprentice thing at the end is not the canon ending. Um, so I think the, the first one is the canon ending, whereas, it's, you know, Detective Tap's son is also killed by Jigsaw and everybody else dies in the game. So that one. Very cool. Does. But yeah, so that's that's the two Saw games. Are they good? No. Fuck no. They're terrible. Um, the combat system. Never played them. Story's good. Um, but the rest of it is bad. Uh, the yeah. So that's that's the games. That's the games. Right on. Very cool. Hey, I think there was um, a Saw virtual reality game too, but it was just like a ride. I don't. Mm, I don't remember like one of those forty X kind of things, like the Simpsons kinda, ride, or Back to the Future yeah, ride. But it's, it's just like, well, it's, but it's like a virtual. Is a virtual reality game that you use the oh, visor okay. on and all that. Oh, know. okay. You know, it's funny that you made that mistake, Stephen, because uh, I'm actually. I'm going to have you guys come over to this corner that you've never seen before called Tuki's uh, theme park corner, because yeah. this movie, coaster. this movie, it's not a corner we're going to visit very often because How like, could this we? doesn't happen that often. It's a very dusty corner that will remain dusty. We will visit it from time to time. But there was a roller coaster based on the, there is a roller coaster based on the movie yeah, still. still around in Thorpe Park in surrey england hmm. uh and i've never been to surrey england so i've never been on it but i certainly have watched a lot of youtube videos about it interesting uh yeah and apparently it's uh the steepest free fall roller coaster in the motherfucking world man interesting is it still i know it was when it opened it uh, you know open? what uh i don't know because I didn't actually look it up. I'm just going by memory from YouTube videos. Mm. I try to keep it, you know, really, really natural. Like, I'm like a method podcaster, you know? Right. Like, right. like <laughs> all this right. comes from my life, man. Word. Yeah. Right on. Right on. But yeah, it's called Saw the Ride. And it's Saw a roller ride. coaster. And people fucking love it. It's and I'm sure there's been plenty of houses at Halloween Horror Nights that are Saw related. Oh yeah, Universal. There's they've had a few, at least a few. I feel like numerous, but yeah, that's a good yeah. point. I should have thought of that when I. I've seen a, I've seen I a few videos here to this corner on TikTok of Tobin Bell going through it once one of the saw houses. Oh okay. So. Yeah, that is the thing they do. Right on. Well, cool, this... Stephen. Tell us how much this movie made. Yeah, so this movie opens <laughs> on May. 14th 2021 it opens to the opening weekend was an 8.75 million dollars on its way to 23.2 million domestic and another 16.3 million internationally for a total worldwide gross of 39.5 million dollars making it the single lowest entry in this entire motherfucking franchise. So if what? you thought we were getting more spirals, I, you're probably wrong. Um, and they talked about doing a TV series, a follow-up TV series, you know. I mean... It doesn't make any sense. Where do you take the story? The, the guy that was a jigsaw know. copycat done did what he wanted to do. Like, he what else does thing. he... Well, no, because they're still cops, man. I fucking guess. You got to apply it to the whole system, man. Uh, so again, this movie comes out May 14th, 2021. It opens at number one, 8.75 million opens at number one in its opening weekend. The second number two movie for that week is a movie called, uh, it's a Jason Statham Guy Ritchie film called Wrath of Man, which I have never fucking heard of until this moment. Yo, but he gave that man his career, man. He did. Guy Ritchie gave Jason Statham, his career for sure. And Jason Statham took a hard left after a couple Guy Ritchie movies and started going full into the action stuff. So, yeah. Now he's fighting giant prehistoric sharks. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, in the uh, third place spot, another movie opening this week Those Who Wish Me Dead uh, coming out. What the fuck out. is that? That is the uh, Angelina Jolie firefighter movie. I'm sorry um, that I sound so offended, but if I haven't heard of a movie, so here's what happened. What the fuck is that movie? <laughs> so this is this is 2021, um, which is I was there, yeah. 
Yeah. People are not, this is where everyone's still feeling the effects of COVID. People are still scared to go to the movie theaters, which I think is a big part of why this movie underperforms so drastically. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, this is also the year that Warner brothers is co-releasing everything in theaters and on HBO max at the same time. Oh, wasn't that wonderful? It, mm, what a great time for movies. For um, me, it was. For me, it was. Because sure. I wasn't going to go to the theater, man. No. My kid's high risk. I'm not going out to that bitch. Absolutely. And no, if I, I, like, I was high risk. I'm also not going out to that bitch. Yeah, dude. Fuck that. I still want to see that shit. Like, I would rather see it at the theater. But circumstances being what they are, yes, drop that shit on Max day one. Right. But see so that this, motherfucker. This was dropped on HBO Max. And it's, again, one of those movies that people are like, shrug i guess i don't care about this but this is like that kind of mid-level this like this that that kind of mid-budget movie that people have been saying we want this we want this we want this forever uh and then when they finally get it they, no one sees it so like it, it's just kind of a mid-budget drama thriller thing and they released it in like may yeah like saw movies are a halloween tradition and even though this is a spinoff Mm-hmm. If you want people to come see your Saw adjacent fucking movie, you release it at Halloween. Well, and that's um, because again, like releasing on Halloween, but like beginning of October, sure. Like 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 this well, upcoming Saw movie, it's coming out the end of September. Like that's yeah. when you want to. They, saw they, movie did, to they come didn't out. always release them on the weekend of Halloween. No, they just you, did it in October that's, sometimes. It's, it's that's a that's thing, a death yeah. sentence because people are going to Halloween party. Like people aren't going to the movies on Halloween. They're doing yeah. You got to get it a month and a half, two months before. The, the tagline that, was you said the tagline earlier is Halloween. It must be Saw. Exactly. Or so it's October, that, it must be Saw. Exactly. Like, so that and that was the but yeah. So this kind of doesn't make any sense. Um, I agree. The release strategy, not great. Uh, in fourth place, Dragon Slayer, the movie Mugen Train. I don't know what that what is. What the fuck is that? It's an anime movie. What is going on in May of 2021? It's an anime movie. <laughs> okay, well then, yeah, I don't know what the fuck it is. Um, and in fifth place, uh, holding steady at number five is the 11th week of Raya and the Last Dragon, which is the Disney animated film from 2021. I think everyone's just kind of holding out for Disney Plus there because even in 11 weeks, it's only made about $46 million. What the fuck is that? It's it's the I just told you it's the Disney I animated know you did, movie. But from how, that year. how do I not remember any of these movies? Dude, it 2021 was a dark time. Yeah. Oh, yo, no, you're right. I was living in a cabin in the woods. Yep. You're right. You're right. Yep. That tracks. Mm-hmm. That fucking tracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rounding out the top ten, we've got uh, Godzilla versus Kong in sixth place. Uh, I did one... see that motherfucker. Yeah, you did. I had a uh, good in, time with that. In seventh place, I'm. I think I don't know if we were going to be able to cover this one anymore. I think they're doing a sequel, but in seventh place is the uh, reboot of Mortal Kombat. Uh, in Yo, eighth place, Finding the You. The first. Get hold on a second. The first 10 minutes of that Mortal Kombat movie. So much faster if Tucker didn't want to talk about all of these movies. Are so good. Brett, you're with me on this. I the yeah. The opening I, of that movie are, is everything a Mortal Kombat movie should be. At, at the time, I I remember enjoying most of the film in general. Um, oh. For me, not, it just went so downhill after that, but that's perfect. Like that first, that opening scene perfect that's mm-hmm. that's how you make a mortal Kombat movie like i have nostalgia for the 90s one and it, it's fine it's great for what it is and it does what it does well but oh boy that first scene i'm sorry steven go ahead i just that had it's just so impactful because it's such a shitty movie otherwise um in eighth place we have something called finding you don't ask i don't know uh, in ninth place, a movie called Profile. Again, don't ask. I don't know. And in tenth place, I'm going to preface this by saying, "Don't ask. I don't know." A movie called Here Today. What? So, Tucker, what let's that? say it together. What? What the, the fuck, fuck is, that? is that? Tucker can make all that sync wow. up in the edit, right? Um, no, I'll probably. fix it. Sure. <laughs> The Tomatometer score on this one is a 37%. The critics consensus from the Book of Saw suggests an interesting new direction for the Saw franchise, even if the gory sum is rather less than its parts. Uh, The Metacritic score is a 40 based on mixed or average reviews from 33 critics. 
And the letterbox score is a 2.1. Brett, out of five stars, how are you ranking Spiral colon from the Book of Saw? Uh, yeah, so I gave this one one and a half. One and a half. All right, fair enough. Tucker, what about you? Uh, <laughs> I'm asking for the first time because you've not revealed it in any way so far. Also a one and a half because, look, it gets half a star for being a movie that looks like a movie. You know, it's competently made it technically production right. wise. You know, p- the people put in the work, the Teamsters, they were doing their thing, you know. Sure were. It gets sure. a half a star for making me think Sam Jackson's character was dead. <laughs> and it gets a half a star <laughs> for Sam Jackson just coming in and fucking making this movie his bitch. He does. He's and that's so it. That's my movie. rating. Yeah. I, I, I'd originally put this at a three and a half, but after talking to you guys, I got to, I got to bump it down to a three. So it's, it's a three star for me. Word. So yeah, there it is. That's Word. that, that is our rating of the saw franchise and that, or I guess our rating of spiral from the book of saw for our rating of the saw franchise. You need to check out our Patreon disenfranch pod, uh, patreon.com slash disenfranch pod for five bucks a month you get access to literal hours of content behind that paywall days including our weekly months our weekly sometimes hours long not months <laughs> sometimes our hours long what are we watching which we record at the beginning of every record it doesn't release until a few days after this record comes out um so yeah we we will always release it uh every every sunday unless tucker forgets which has happened um but yeah that'll, that'll drop once. every week and it i'm it but it happened and i still had it out by noon i had it out by noon it still came out on sunday you did it's fine fuck you man no no don't <laughs> fuck me no thank you um but, um but yeah so you can get access to that including but other stuff, including Unenfranchised, Oops All Video Game Corner, Oops All Christianity Corner, um, so much content back there, Disenfranchised at the Movies, all thing, most things we've mentioned in the over the course of this episode, you can find there, patreon.com slash disenfranchpod. You can also follow us on all the social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and Facebook at disenfranchpod pod make sure you give us a nice juicy five-star rating and please leave a review um wherever you get your podcasts especially if you get them on apple podcasts we we do love that and you can also shoot us an email let us know how you're doing or what you think of the podcast offer any suggestions to disenfranchpod at gmail.com we reserve the right to not take those suggestions uh i am your host stephen foxworthy you can find me on twitter instagram letterboxd and blue sky at chewy walrus brett where can we find you on socials these days uh you can find me on instagram and letterboxd at sus sus underscore warlock and we are looking forward to uh seeing that list of all the saw films ranked once you see saw x this weekend and tucker where can we find you on social media well as always you can find me on the youtubes at ICE909, that's I-C-E-N-I-N-E, the number zero and the number nine. Uh, also, myself and the team at Tuck Mugs have still been hard at work these last couple weeks. Uh, we've done a few promotions for the Endless Elsewhere uh, film, Circle City Supernatural. Which is available now. Know, we're all involved in, so... Uh, uh, head on over to Tuck Mugs to see one of our most uh, visually alluring posts. God, what a great! You can tell done. you can tell Joseph does photography because holy shit, that's such a great picture. Mm, that boy uses yeah. cameras. He's yeah, he used does. A few cameras before in his life, <laughs> and he uses them this well. Got cameras. Mm-hmm. He's got cameras, cameras for days. Uh, an unexpected development this week. Uh, I am back personally on the Instagrams as well. It's true. Uh, and because I'm a very private person uh, and will only be posting vain photos of myself and cool photos of stuff I own, um, you can hit me up on the Insta scams at Ice909, spelled the same as it is on YouTube. So maybe just rewind if you didn't catch that. <laughs> 
anyway, that works. Or games that you're playing. You did post the picture of Control this past week. I did. It's all just is that what that was? Surface level shit. Yeah, dude. Surface level shit, man. Don't nobody need to know anything about me, except that I'm handsome and I play cool video games and have cool records. That's all anybody needs to know. That's mine, except for mine is that I'm handsome. Uh, I have an adorable dog and I eat good food. That's there my you Instagram. Go. There you go. But right on. Mine would be. Right on. For all of us here at Disenfranchised, um, I'm your host, Stephen Foxworthy, for my co-host, Brett Wright and Tucker. Until next time, game over. <laughs>